theme this year is the Gold Cup Parade welcomes the world. And it's a very fitting theme, too, with the Confederation Bridge and our broadcast location here. Just a stone's throw from Province House, where everyone sat down in 1864 to get the country started. And we're getting into the spirit of things this morning. Uh, That's right. Headsets don't permit hats, but <laughs> yes. we're going to let the Capital <laughs> Commission, hopefully our sponsors, set it aside for this morning. You know, uh, while we get things straightened away here, we should check in with our cohort on the street, Roger. That is Matthew Rainey. Matthew, where are you? Well, I am down here on Grafton Street. I love the outfits, guys. Roger, I want the hat on. You look like Mr. Peanut. I'm dressed in historic garb, too. It's the 1980s fashion victim look. As you can see, the excitement is brewing here. We've already had one small Doritos accident. We hope to God it's the last, Roger. Over here, we have a young guy who's pretty excited. What's your name? Carson. Carson? How long has Carson been coming to the parade? Oh, for two, uh, two years. Yeah, yeah two yeah. and a half, yeah. Well, Carson's like the rest of us. Pretty excited. I saw the floats this morning on North River Road. They look great, and I'll get you as close to as many of them as I can, guys. Thank you very much, Matthew. I mentioned the Capitol Commission. Let's take a quick peek. For more than two centuries, Shawtown has been laying on its hospitality to some pretty interesting visitors. And today, we're still at it, with a summer filled with lots to see and lots to do, right up to the Festival of the Fathers. In between, there'll be plenty to see and do, and maybe a few ghosts to get acquainted with. With 200 years of history and hospitality behind us, we're ready to make your time with us unforgettable in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. And we welcome you back to our broadcast location, uh, we're in front of the Confederation Center of the Arts here in Charlottetown, and although we had some rain yesterday, it's a nice morning, eh? It's absolutely gorgeous. Wasn't it great to get up and see that sun shining this morning and know that everybody's uh, excitement and everything was going to get to get out here on the street and not get wet? Simply a relief. Yes, That's absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> Got a guest uh, sitting with us right now, and uh, we welcome Dave McKenzie of the Capital Commission. Can you tell me, first of all, what, uh, what's your role, function, and responsibility with this group? Well, the capital, I'm the executive director okay. of the Capital Commission, and the Capital Commission was set up in late 1995 to really take advantage of the fact that Charlottetown is the birthplace of Confederation. And our, our mandate is really to develop and promote Charlottetown as the birthplace, and, and that's why we're really pleased, obviously, to be associated with the Gold Cup Parade this year. Capital Commission of Prince Edward Island, then? That's right, the Capital Commission of Prince Edward Island. The, the, other, the other mandate that we have, of course, is promoting the fact that Charlottetown is the capital for all islanders, and uh, it's something that we're trying to promote. Where do you get your dollars? Our dollars are, are uh, spread out from public sources. Um, there's about 50% that we raise from the private sector who think that inc by promoting Charlottetown as the birthplace, we can increase tourism visitation to the, to the capital area. So the private sector have, uh, have bought on, to use a phrase, uh, pretty strongly with the commission. As well, we raise through events like festivals and things like that. We have revenue sources to those as well. And what do you do with those dollars? How do you get people to come to Charlottetown and to take part in all of the things that Charlottetown has to offer? There's, there's, about, uh, there's really two primary ways. One is obviously in, in enhancing the product that we have as the birthplace. And you can see that with, with your uniforms, with the Fathers of Confederation and Ladies of Confederation, with the vignettes that we do. Uh, heritage lecture series, walking tours, things like that, just making sure that the product is really strong. So we'll spend about a, about a half our budget on that product itself. The other half is spent on telling people, primarily Canadians, that Charlottetown is an important destination for them, that it's a symbol of Canadian unity, and that the birthplace should be a place that all Canadians visit. What are the things that you're not doing that you hope in future years to do? Because I know this is not a one-year plan. This is a yeah. long term. No question. Uh, the first couple of years, the board of directors were, were spent getting the store open. Getting and that the feet wet. Getting the yeah. feet wet, telling people that we are the birthplace confederation, and I think we're starting to do that. The more important phase that we believe is to start enhancing the product, developing the heritage zone of the city, making sure that when people come here they get a sense of what happened in 1864, what it looked like, what, what the values were of the Fathers of Confederation that shaped the formation of the country. So that, that's the bigger task and one that we'll get started with fairly shortly. And you're looking forward to today. Uh, had a, yeah. any kind of an inkling? You fellas have a, have a float in. I guess you're hoping for an award. We, we certainly do. We worked hard into the wee hours last night completing it. And uh, we're, we're, we're really pleased. Most of our efforts have been focused in Charlottetown. Uh, we think it's very important what CBC does in, in programming this program for all Islanders, and that's why it's good, you know, that's why we enjoy being a part of it. So, we look forward to today. David, thank you, and thanks for the dollars to help uh, all Islanders enjoy today's parade, and I understand it's about ready to come, so well, you go and enjoy be it. Best of luck. Thanks. Good luck with your float. Okay, thank you. So, Cheryl, uh, first entries are just uh, 
peeking around the corner. It's I'm so sure. great when you start to hear the sirens and you know the exactly. bike is coming. and they're not chasing you. That's, <laughs> that's always a good sign. That's a good thing. We have a good crowd out here this morning. There too. is People a really good lining, crowd out this morning. Lining really the streets here. And they've been here early. And, and look, it was very windy when we first got here. There's the collections. We should talk about that. Uh, $20,000 or so to put this parade on, and a lot of that money is raised right here. From the user pay. That, uh, it's user <laughs> Viewer pay. Going to the police it's a, it's a, it's a loony or, or a toony. Here, okay. uh, here is the police cruiser, and uh, Sarge is uh, in mascot this morning. That's the uh, mascot of the Carlo Town Police Department. In the community policing band here. Full complement of officers, uh, civilian staff, commissioners. They handle the downtown parking and uh, keeping people straight there. Sarge with a big wave for us all. Now it's traditional that the Charlottetown's finest lead off, followed by the fire department, which we'll see in just a few moments. The parade is broken this year into five sections, and the organizing committee, who've been hard at work since, uh, well, about a year ago, August, uh, put it into five sections, and they break up vans and floats and clowns and horses. And, and from our end of things, a wonderful organization this year with the uh, parade uh, people on the ground, too, during the work. It's just been absolutely fabulous. There's a couple of old timers, Cliff Stewart and Havel and McDougal in the 1929 American LaFrance Pumper. This is so great. Isn't it great? It's shining today. Given the honor of driving it each and every year in the Gold Cup Parade. You know, it's kind of one of those things they could uh, possibly let people use for like wedding parties or something like that. I'm just thinking. Hmm. Wouldn't it be interesting? <laughs> Just stand You'd in the back. You'd want it to move a little faster than that, though, would you? <laughs> you could do the ceremony right in the back. Right? right in the back. Are fire chiefs able to do that? I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, we could. Uh, we could JP them for a day. We sure could. These the gentlemen restored this pumper almost ten years ago. And here's the theme of the parade, of course. Welcome to the world, Welcome celebrating the Confederation Bridge. And a lot of the uh, floats uh, throughout the parade today, of course, reflecting that theme and uh, using a lot of the bridge image, too. You'll see the bridge coming up a lot today in the various floats. No question. And uh, welcoming the world to the Federation Bridge has been. It's, uh, it's been a busy, busy highway. Oh, yes, and people who live along the route now are talking about the, the, the quantity of traffic that's going through mm -hmm. steadily. It used to come in bursts, but now uh, it's coming right along. Here's the Legion Color Party, and you know some of these gentlemen. That's right. Uh, waving the Canadian flag or carrying the Canadian flag here is John Thistle uh, with the Union Jack, Ed Toombs there. The island flag today carried by Paul Gallant. Pat Doyle is carrying the flag for the city of Charlottetown, and the UN flag, uh, Bruce Riggs, carrying that one, and the Branch One flag for the Legion is carried today by Gerald Coyle. Just right. I hear some music. The Colchester Legion Pipes and Drums formed in 1973, so next year is going to be celebrating their 25th anniversary under the sponsorship of the Royal Canadian Legion Branch 26 out of Peru, Nova Scotia. The band presently a membership of 20 pipers and drummers wearing the Murray of Apple Tartan. I was just going to ask was you what that was. worn by the North Nova Scotia Highlanders during the Second World War. On so let's welcome the Colchester Legion Pipes and Drums. Individuals who are visiting Charlottetown aboard HMCS Charlottetown, the first vessel to come under the Confederation Bridge uh, late last week, and uh, they're in Charlottetown. Tied up in door. Charlottetown again before they go off on their next mission, actually. That's exactly what's going on, and they're donating, I noticed, uh, uh, re 
doing a whole wing of the University Hospital uh, in the pediatric area for uh, for youngsters, and it's going to be called the uh, HMCS Charlottetown. Oh. So and we have uh, Captain Romano this afternoon from the HMCS Charlottetown in the viewing stand. Hey, and now Matthew, Matt, uh, yeah. what's he up to? He's uh, out there somewhere, somewhere. on the float. That's right. This is the Award of Excellence float, the HMCS Charlottetown. How are you doing, sir? Can you tell me who you are and uh, what your position is on the boat? My name is Corporal Dugas, sir, and uh, I'm in the pay office on the HMCS Charlottetown, and I, uh, I'm the pay writer for, the, uh, for all the staff on board. Now, the city of Charlottetown built this uh, float. What do you think of the whole thing? Well, I think this is a really good representation of our ship. And now, where you're standing now, what would you be standing on? Well, I'm standing on the quarter deck. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so tell me now, that you don't have like a little Isaac character tending bar or anything, do you? An Isaac character tending bar? Well, we have a we have a person that uh, does the bartending, yeah, but I don't know if he's, uh, his name's Isaac. Okay, we'll check on that. Thanks a lot, sir. Come back and see Back up, guys. <laughs> I'm going to float that this afternoon. Okay? <laughs> That's right. Great right down at the uh, party they're having. Actually, tomorrow at the party at the Yacht Club to okay. welcome, uh, welcome the HMCS Oh, look uh, at them. All dressed up. The three, three little, little pigs. pigs. Yeah, the, the three bears. No, not pigs. Those are bears. Those Roger. are bears? Yeah, get your animals okay. straight. Three bears. <laughs> Triple pets. Oh, there's the pigs in the back. I knew see. there was pigs there. The nose, that's right. <laughs> anyway, they do great work, Triple right? Triple pets, theater company. John M. Gillis Memorial Lodge. Dragon into view now. The yeah. entry from <laughs> Dr. John M. Gillis Lodge at a Belfast. Uh, nine years uh, coming to the parade ever since the nursing home and the community care facility opened. The theme is drag your tail on over to Prince Edward Island. And on board, we can see some of the residents. There's Chester Gillis, originally from Point Prim, Mac McLeod from Belfast, Ann Morrison, who was originally from Point Prim, yep. Temple Llewellyn from Montague, there's a familiar name, and uh, John Ryan, who uh, hailed from the Murray River area. And of course, the staff are here to, to help out. Uh, Jackie Byrne, Christina McCabe, Walter Perry, along with uh, the uh, young pennies is Cody Byrne, a driver, of course, Doug McKenzie, the owner of the facility. Matthew, uh, You've got some guests? Yeah, we, he's gone to the dogs. Roger, I, I'm down here. I'm with the Abigwith uh, Kennel Club. Uh, cute little guys, cute little guys. Tom, why don't you tell me a bit about your group? Well, it's the Abigwith Kennel Club. We were formed in 1962. We've been in the parade for the last three years. And today we've got about 18 purebred dogs from different breeds from different countries. Give me some examples. Who do we have here from around the world? We have a German Shepherd, of course. We have an Australian Shepherd. We've got a Skipperkey from Belgium. We've got an Alaskan Malamute. We've got Collies and Shelties, Poodles. Who is this beautiful one over here? That's the Poodle, miniature Poodle. And we have Silky Toy, toy Terriers from Australia. We've got Dachshunds. We've got almost everything you can think of. A Boxer. That's great. Well, thanks a lot, Tom. Enjoy the parade. Thank you. Okay. Now, what I really want is one of those Irish wolfhounds. Did you, you see those? One of those big there? guys? One of those great big guys. You could ride that to work, right? Yeah. yeah. Astar, the gold robot from Planet Danger, stands in a safe place on the War Amps float with an important message, Cheryl, and that is play safe as well as drive safe. Yeah, they're coming up right here now. We can see them, and there is Astar. Many children enrolled in the War Amps amputee program called CHAMPS have uh, lost their limbs due to accidents and they all know the importance of safety at all times and on this float today we have seven champs from across canada they're on board as safety ambassadors stephen hahn uh, west royalty he's 20. he's been here before yes he sure has harold preston is a little nine-year-old from the charlottetown area matthew hanrahan just three and a half from uh, from Sherwood, and there's there's other guests from New Brunswick as well as uh, Nova Scotia. That's right, Justin Bellavo from Dieppe, and uh, Erica Noonan is on there from uh, Grand Falls, and we've got uh, Craig McKenzie, a 14-year-old from Truro. And the new war ramps float featuring traffic signs and uh, signals, along with skateboarders and cyclists, and the message there is, of course, to wear your helmet. So the celebration going on here. This is the best commercial float. And uh, this is a float with a bit of a history, Roger. And they kind of had a disaster last night. This is the Confederation Court Mall float. And uh, yesterday, as it was coming into town, it got caught in a strong crosswind. Yep. Fell apart. They had to start late last night and put the whole thing back together. They've done a great job because they won, as you mentioned, that best commercial award. And, of course, on board the young company, performing just behind us each and every day at lunchtime here at Confederation Center of the Arts. 
That's right, and we have a street, a street scene here, Grafton Street, and it looks just like Grafton Street with the entry to the Confederation Court Mall and the Young Company performing in a oh, slightly different location today. It's a great show. Anybody that hasn't caught, you know, chance to get down and grab a sandwich, uh, sit around and uh, put an hour, an hour and ten minutes of time. They are having a ball. They're going to be tired by the end of this parade. No, probably they won't be. No, no, they're <laughs> not those guys. They're younger than us. <laughs> Don't mention that. <laughs> Now here we see coming some of the children in island kindergartens and daycares. These are children who have taken part over the past year in the Safety Child Program. And uh, the big yellow guy there in the middle, that is Yellow Dinosaur. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Very aptly named. And you can see it on the, the dinosaur on the children's t-shirts. So he'd be the front guy for the uh, Safety That's right. Child Program. That's right. He goes out to all the schools and okay. visits the children and talks to them about how to keep themselves safe. And the logo they have is You Can't Fool you can't Me. Fool me. Isn't that great? Yeah, it is great. Isn't it? And very colorful. Very, very colorful. Also on there, we have Doug Como and Dave Gillis. Well, one of them's inside the dinosaur costume. They take turns going out to the schools. Yeah. Well, founded in August of 1970, 27 years ago, traveling through Quebec, Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, Ontario, and Maine, this group composed of 43 members, 20 brass, 14 percussion, and seven others under the direction today of drum major Isabelle Ryu, colors Valerie Lozier. They present a new repertoire of music with their vibrant style and their array shirl of musical instruments, St. Jean de Dieu, Major Vets. the new majorettes from the province of Quebec and uh, they're going to be performing as a lot of the bands that are visiting Prince Edward Island. This group will be at the Canadian Tire this afternoon, 12.30 until 1 o'clock. So That's right. After the parade is done, uh, the work is not Jen. done. Oh, oh, oh. Here comes the Start RCMP up. contingent in this year's parade. Uh, we have upwards of 50 members of the force here, and uh, they're in almost full dress uniform. Can you tell us what's missing? Well, almost. Uh, they call it in the business, but it's the Sam Brown stripe? Strip Sam Strip Brown. Strip Sam Brown. Do you know what that means? Well, not really. It means they're wearing everything but their sidearms. Oh. They, they've got the, the leather straps, they've got everything they would have but not Boy, the sidearms. Boy, are they serious this morning. These are officers, great? yeah, from PEI, New Brunswick, and Nova Scotia. And of course, here comes a horse. There's a horse. There's got to be a horse with the RCFD, right? Yeah, that's right, and this is a guy who's been on this horse all summer. So he's been patrolling? There he is, yeah. He's, he's the guy who's been patrolling. doing the horse patrols in the parks. You've probably seen him if you've been out okay. and about on the island this summer. And it's uh, Constable Mark Finnis. He's, right. uh, I thought it sounded like a great job, but his staff sergeant said, no, remember, he's got to look after that horse, well, too. Look, that so. would be fun. Yeah, well, I'd like it. Horses don't talk back. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we've got one of the bike patrols here as well today, just coming up behind the horse. You can see him in just a moment, and he's been uh, traveling, he and she have been traveling the streets of Charlottetown this he's summer. He's in great shape. Constable Tom Butler is on the bike patrol, just coming into view. There he is. Matthew! I'm down here on the street, guys, and I, I, I notice these frogs, and it looks like they've swallowed human beings. It's terrific to see. What's your name? Valerie. Valerie, and you're from Froggies? Yes, I am. And you are? Paula. Paula, okay. Now, tell me how long you guys have been in the parade. About three years now. Well, three years. Tell me your history. What kind of characters have you had over the years? Frogs. Frogs. <laughs> More see. frogs. Clowns. Hence the name Froggies, frogs. I guess. Yeah, yeah. This year, you're Mexican. Why Mexican? A bigger word for well, the world. world. And, yeah. how, do, how do frogs say ribbit in Mexico? <laughs> it's, it's a universal language, isn't it? Okay, thanks a lot, guys. Back upstairs. And uh, after the parade, those Fiesta Frogs are going to make their way to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital for a visit. They do that every year, and oh, really? they're always a big hit. Okay, there they go. Another first-time entry here. It's the Charlottetown Superstore, which opened uh, last October. October That's so why their first, first time. Parade. First right opportunity. On. Staff at the Superstore, they tell me, are proud of this year's entry. Uh, 
their most magnificent event this year has been donating over eleven thousand dollars to that in telethon so they've been raising money throughout the year and this float was mainly the effort of the bakery department and there's some real characters in that department that's right <laughs> So uh, that's right, if you're going in for bakery this, this morning, you might be a little disappointed. You'll have right. to wait until 11, 12 or something like exactly. that. Exactly, and they're playing, of course, the Randy J. Martin tune. That's uh, Ain't Enough Time. Ain't Enough Time. We've got some clowns that are uh, actually being judged. to see a number on this clown's oh, back. Right. We don't okay. have names, but Clown with the, with the water gun. Shoot that's water. a bad sign for those people on the sides. Here's some more pets uh, welcoming the wonderful pets of the world. On board, we see all the pets where they come from amazing round the world display from fox run pet supply that's right they've got budgies on there now they're in cages so they're not going to get away oh, did good. you know that budgies come from australia i didn't know that no i did not guinea pigs from peru or brazil did you they, know that no uh, uh pomeranians you know where they come from pomeranian no, dogs pomeranian russia yes okay good one okay and apparently on there somewhere though i can't quite see it right now is a chinese crested dog which is a hairless dog with fuzz on it. Cheryl, grab that cat head. that just ran by uh, for you. No. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, a lot of the children here, uh, people who've gotten their pets over the years at Fox Run, and they come out uh, to take sure. part in the Aren't parade. They gorgeous? And uh, we can see a lot of kittens on there as well. There's the cage. You can see the cage with the budgies in it. They're going to have to stop and uh, little Airedale uh, guy out there in the especially front. Especially the dogs. And look at the big guy. Isn't that super? The kids are enjoying it. Oh yeah! Once the dogs come by, that's a yeah, that's a big hit. Yeah, love they're pointing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Just great. Now, what do we have here? We have more street scenes. Oh, by the way, they're on the Fox Run uh, float there. Linda McLeod, uh, mother of Carolyn McLeod, the owner, and Rena McLeod, all doing the work. It's a real family venture. Okay, Matthew Rainey, what's up? I'm down with the Boys and Girls Club float, and what is your name? Kendra Gormley. And Kendra, why don't you tell me what you guys did here to decorate your float? Um, well, we made cutouts and we just painted them. Now, what are the cutouts of? Cardboard. But what did you do? Did you actually cut, did you actually lay down and draw a trace around yourselves? Is that what you did? Yeah. So who are you? Which one are you? Is this one of you right here? Yeah. Okay, let me see. Yeah, I like it. I think it uh, bears a strong resemblance. So was it fun? How long did it take? Um, it took me around 20 minutes. Okay, well, thanks a lot. Back upstairs, guys. Thanks very much, Matthew. And uh, Look at those characters. They've done such a great job of painting them on the side of the float. Uh, the members of the Boys and Girls Club are from 6 to 12 years old, and it's a recreational and educational program with yeah. the club. As they move. Here we have the Bridge to Heaven is Faith, the Glory Land Express gospel group. We got together about two years ago, a group of island musicians who wanted to make Christian music. And today we have Brian and Brody Knox, Ron Fran, and Leah Peterson, Hartz and Della Godkin, who a lot of islanders know. That's right, uh, Roy and Sandra Durong, Peter and Colleen McDougall, Eddie, Linda and Nicole Durong, Bill and Karen Trenum, and Cephas Ross on board making music. Besides singing the traditional gospel songs, they've written many of their own, and Kendall Doherty, uh, up and cover here in Prince Edward Island, the great guy, has recorded several of those. That's right, he's got a couple on his new CD. They've been playing at uh, correctional centers and uh, seniors' homes, too, on a regular basis. And uh, they've been singing every other Sunday morning at the waterfront. That's right. And we've got a big day at the waterfront later today. We'll talk about that in, uh, in just a couple of moments. Here's the United Way of Prince Edward Island. Uh, this is the first time the United Way has been in the parade since well, the I guess 70s, 20 years yeah, ago. The 70s, yeah. They decided to get back involved, and their theme is building uh, stronger communities for a better world. Sure. Representatives of Brownies, Sparks, and Guides on board, the Wellington Boys and Girls Club, the Catholic Family Services Group, CNIB, St. John Ambulance, just some of the groups that uh, are uh, recipients of money from the United Way and the donations that, that are given each and every year. That's right. They have 23 member groups on board now, and uh, Milford Quinn, the president for this year's on board as well. I haven't seen too many horses outside of the RCMP, but uh, the wagon train, time to hitch up, <laughs> saddle up, and giddy up. It's uh, the wagon train of the Spud Island Group. They're uh, just one of the wagons. Uh, come fall, they have about 18, 20 of them. And, uh, they and head off on that's wagon right. Train. And apparently, it's quite the scene, too, when they head off from New Glasgow, heading up towards Cavendish for their big overnight stay. Yeah, Barry McMillan of the Fed is, is on board today. His team of Clydesdales and uh, Stephen McEwen. 
is with him. The theme is Prince Edward Island welcomes Texas, and we see the Earth Riders carrying flags from the Lone Star State, Canada, and Prince Edward Island. A quick break right now as uh, we let them ride into the sunset. Time for applause. For more than two centuries, Charlottetown has been laying on its hospitality to some pretty interesting visitors. And today we're still at it, with a summer filled with lots to see and lots to do, right up to the Festival of the Fathers. In between, there will be plenty to see and do, and maybe a few ghosts to get acquainted with. With 200 years of history and hospitality behind us, we're ready to make your time with us unforgettable in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. And welcome back to downtown Charlottetown, the 1997 Gold Cup Parade. And we can even hear some more music in the background. We have before another we get to that, this is coming. Amalgamated Aries. That's right, and they are connected this year with the 4-H. They're one of the sponsors of 4-H Youth and uh, programs on Prince Edward Island. And their theme is 4-H, more than you ever imagined. Head, heart, hands, and health. Learn to do by doing is the motto. Absolutely. Started in 1913. Program. I used to be a member. Did you really? Yes, and look what it did for you. It is great. There's some more music, don't you? We have a 4-H you're driving that band, too. Born in 1949, one. the Haley Girls Pipe Band was the first all-girls band that pulled in eastern Canada. They then wore the hunting Fraser kilt, hose, black velvet jackets, and white lace cuffs. They've redesigned that uniform uh, as the time went on, and uh, they're uh, still wearing that uh, Fraser kilt, but a few changes in the overall uniform. Oh, with him a listen as drum major Gary Dara, pipe major Sandy McKean present the De Blasco Haley Pipes and Drums. Association for Community Living, an advocacy group for mentally challenged islanders, in keeping with the parade's theme of welcoming the world, the group is delivering to all of us the message that all citizens must be included in the community. That's right, everybody got together and uh, painted the globe on there with the schoolhouse on top, lots of balloons, lots of folks riding on the float are John, Mark, Shanna, Lori, Gerard, and Ian. There, uh, John's from New Brunswick and the rest of them are for PEI. Mm -hmm. And we've even got a guest or two from Australia, which is great. I guess the, she wins the prize for coming the furthest for this one. APM first time in the parade, Atlantic Property Management. Youth, our future builders. Uh, today's youth, tomorrow's builders, an interesting thing. Uh, and uh, this is actually one of the winners in today's parade. These guys have won the President's Fantastic. Cup. Fantastic. That's the good one. And on board that's there. That's the big one. That's the that's big one. That's the best. I'll yeah. bet they're happy, too. <laughs> From the drafting and design tables here, you can see at the front to the on-site engineering and the actual building, uh, there's the young APM team, I guess engineers and builders of the future, but yeah. Roger, they're not working. They're all no, hanging they're, over they're the not. side they're there. Smiling. Daniel <laughs> William Banks, Matthew Sarah Gillis, Ben McMillan, Mark Morello, Jordan Abbott, and Jerry Mitchell. Lisa they're Daly, all Deborah part Nickel. Of the, yeah, they're all part of the and parade. Sheila and Sheila Reed, uh, yeah. You know, on time, on, on target, and on budget. Oh. Here oh, comes, here. well, this is another award winner of a different kind. This team, Charlie Blaisdell's uh, team of Clydesdale mares from Fortune, one of the big winners this year in the, in the two-horse hitch at the exhibition. And uh, anybody who loves Clydesdales would say they should always be winners in the, in the draft horse They're competition. They're absolutely gorgeous. Matthew, what's up with you? Robert McPhail, Robert, what kind of car is this? A 1933 Chevrolet Turbo. How long did it take you to, uh, to put this all together now, upgrade it? I had it in 79. In 79. And now, uh, what's going on with this here? This helped you towards a UPEI degree or yeah, something? I'm a fine arts lab. I do woodworking. I'm not an old painter, but I'm a woodworking easier. Okay. All right, Robert, we'll have fun. we got to keep moving here. Okay. Bye bye. You know, I'm not exactly sure how it worked out, but uh, Robert was mentioning earlier that he'd actually gotten some credit from UPEI for doing the sideboards on that car. Well, that's fantastic. Next. And here we have uh, Dave Morgan. It's a 23 Model T delivery truck from Abigail's Craft Shop in Brackney Beach and Victoria. No, we've got Jenkins Transfer. We well, we've got two exactly trucks here in have. a row. We've got uh, Jenkins Transfer coming up uh, with uh, the young There's Jenkins Abigail's. and friends in the back. <laughs> and then we're coming along to uh, David Morgan then with Abigail's Crafts. Yep. And this uh, is the 23 Model T delivery truck, and uh, 
It's uh, been in the parade for quite a few years now. When these were first built, they were uh, arranged just as the trucks, and then you could modify them however you wanted. This spent part of its life as a pie wagon, apparently, in Antigonish. Really? Yeah. It has a four-cylinder engine, and it can actually go 60 miles an hour, Here's believe it or not. 1977 Dodge Power Wagon, a four-wheel drive truck, I'm told, restored to original condition, a special striped package to boot, and uh, it was advertised by Dodge back in the 70s as part of its adult toys can you believe that? <laughs> yes, I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, the uh, original models for these trucks were designed in the Army during the 40s, and then after okay, the war was sense. over, yeah, yes. they made them available to civilians then as well, and they had a, a lot of different versions. You may remember the little red trucks that had yeah. the, the chrome stacks up the side. Yeah, 39 and a half inches, those tires. Uh-oh, uh -oh. who's this looming duck. up behind? Duck, duck, duck. Oh, that's great. We can see Sammy in the clouds. We can see Sammy <laughs> in the clouds. Is he running over the cameraman? Sammy the Sea Monster, 80-foot-long dragon, mainly blue in color. Our monitor Re is true. Requires 18, or no, 15 handlers. We've got 15 handlers here today, and uh, from Myron's, of course, because Myron's is sponsoring Sammy this year. Sammy's got a blue head. Yeah. Oh, no, he's got a yellow body this year. He must have uh, shed, Roger. <laughs> got to be very, very careful, don't you? Yes, just stay very still. Okay. Oh, look at his wings. Those are great. Well, it's time for us to take a bit of a breather here. Great. 97. For more... <laughs> For more than two centuries, Charlottetown has been laying on its hospitality to some pretty interesting visitors. And today we're still at it, with a summer filled with lots to see and lots to do, right up to the Festival of the Fathers. In between, there will be plenty to see and do, and maybe a few ghosts to get acquainted with. With 200 years of history and hospitality behind us, we're ready to make your time with us unforgettable in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. We're back with Mystery Snail, and they are great. Tell us about them, Cheryl. They're a 10-member group. They're uh, here with the fish and the seaweed and deep-sea divers having arisen from Atlantis. They're mostly current and former music students from UPEI. They play all over the place, a wide range of styles. And uh, this is the first time they've washed up here at the Gold Cup Parade. We've got on board there Jonathan Baird, Annette Campbell, Trevor Campbell, Bill Collier, Leith Chu, Blaine Jenkins, Kevin, Kevin McLean. McLean. I love him on the horn. Yeah, Isn't he saxophone? great? saxophone, that's right. Sean Petrie, Craig Schleier, and Glenn Strickey, is it? Yeah, and they're the best first-time entry. So congratulations to Mystery Snail. Wow. Playing all They've the way. They've got oh. them all grooving. Now we have got a tractor coming up, and this tractor is pulling the Country View Boarding Kennel float. Uh, Country View Boarding Kennel owned by Kent and Julie Wood in Crapo. and <laughs> up, uh, we're heading north. <laughs> they're on right? board. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> chilly here now. They've got their furs on. Luckily, it's not a boiling day. And on there with them, look at the dogs, Roger. They're Kishans, right? That's right. A breed that originated in Holland, and they pulled barges there. They like to pull, and some even use them today as sled dogs. They're absolutely great. Look and by the, the way, that tractor under, we saw there, or see there, is a family an antique. antique. Okay, Kent, uh, Kent's grandfather, uh, North Tryon, right? Isn't That's right. Farm there? Farm all 300. I'm sorry to say, though, that they don't make them anymore. Quant qualifies for antique. Yes, they I'm don't really make them anymore, that. do they? That's gorgeous. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I get the message. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You had to nudge me, but I got it. Matthew, Matthew, what's going on? Well, I'm here. Who am I here with? Who are you? The Tooth Fairy? I am the Tooth Fairy. And now, who are you on this float with? And we're with Dental Hygienists across Prince Edward Island. And what is the message you'd like to get out here today? That Dental Hygienists are making happy smiles around the world. Okay, and to always brush. Brush and floss. Brush and floss. You know what I used to do before I went to the dentist is eat a box of Oreos. Oh, he hated that. Bugs. Oh, it was horrible. <laughs> okay, well, have fun and keep that smile. Okay, bye-bye. Matthew actually talking to the Tooth Fairy. Isn't that great? I, yeah, it's a purple color on there, by the way. That's the color for the dental hygienists. Who would have guessed? Purple. I hear a little more music, and back in 1989, Cheryl, our next entry during the centennial celebrations in the town of Port Hawkesbury, this group managed to contact about 500 members and marched and played throughout the years. It was their reunion that sparked the beginning of the Port Hawkesbury 
band. They today consists of 31 members from 9 to 40 years of age. They continue to play favorites like In the Mood, Down by the Riverside, things you and I can relate to. That's right, Four Leaf Clover, Sweet Georgia Brown. Yeah. Jet. Stop yelling. Now we've got some majorettes moving onto the screen. These are the Halifax Sparkletts majorettes. Uh, they began in 1969. And Can I make uh, a quick point? Yeah, sure. The group we just saw, the Port Hawkesbury Marching Band, will be on the steps of Confed Center this oh. afternoon, 2.30 to 3, right. part of a two-hour show from 2 to 4. There's going to be four bands. We'll tell you more in, a, in a, just a moment. That's right. These guys are all getting put to work for the rest sure. of the day. Sure. Oh, yeah, just not the parade. And uh, we've got Brenda Fraser, it's the leader, leader of the Halifax Sparkletts, uh, the lead twirler. Would you like to be lead twirler? Shelly McNamara, she's 24 years old now. I, I would if I, if I could have an elastic tied to that. Uh, I don't know how they do it. I used uh, to practice that for hours. Is that right? I did. Yeah. I borrowed one of these from a friend, but never, never, any luck, never. Okay. They well, the group attended last year's Grey Cup Parade, I'm told, in Hamilton, and, and uh, it, marking their fourth appearance in the parade. They also have attended the World Championships at Notre Dame University. That's down in Indiana. Right, right. For three consecutive years, and they have done very, very well. In wow. fact, I think they've won the, the head twirler competition there, if you can believe it. And that's, that's big stuff. Well, you consider you sort of go to the home of uh, majorettes, you know, when you head down to the States. Their okay. age range in this is amazing. Member range from 8 to 23 years old. Okay, St. John's Lodge is the oldest Masonic order here at Prince Edward Island. Founded a way back before we were born in 1797, <laughs> Cheryl. <laughs> it's incredible, isn't it? <laughs> Celebrating their 200th anniversary in October, and their theme this year is linking past, present, and future of the St. John's Lodge. And we've got a boat approaching the Confederation Bridge. The boat was built by several of the Lodge members. I'm sure it was. It's a... It's very interesting, too, that St. John's Lodge has been involved in parades for many years. Oh, yes, I'm looking at this boat, Roger. I don't think they've no, they built it by members. I, You're lying to me. I, I did. <laughs> they just kind of got it around the corner, right? <laughs> yeah. It's a bay liner. <laughs> Actually, these guys, the, not these guys, but uh, the St. John's Lodge themselves, were they led the parade to Province House uh, when they were laying the cornerstone there. Sure. There they go. And, and now, look who's oh, coming. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Isn't this quite a display? I it, think this may be one of the few times that a racehorse has made an appearance in the Gold Cup Parade. And, it's a uh, huge trailer. This fellow is a retired pacer. Retired but not forgotten. Let's welcome Cam Fulla to the Gold Cup Parade. And look at that. This is perhaps one of the best sires, the best racehorses that's ever toured any track in North America. He won 28 consecutive races. He beat them all. Nothing but dust. They called him the pacing machine, They right? called him the pacing machine. Um, and Pat Crow, who drove him, was, uh, if you watch Compass last night, he was telling Matthew Rainey that this horse knows where he's at. He's a bit of a ham. I was going like, to say, he's the he ham knows. fella, look, isn't no, he? No, look, he's, he's he kind is. of saying thank you. He is. Look at him yeah. bowing. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> Now, coming up here, we have the original, guess this, the original Sobeys meat delivery wagon. It was used by J.W. Sobey. That and looks like uh, another Blaisdell horse. It is. Randy Blaisdell's yeah. horse. That's right. From Fortune. Now, this and was way back, what, in 1907? 1907. Yeah, when so he used to deliver groceries. Door to door. Door to door. Well, well. They still have the original wagon. Yeah. And, and uh, they're uh, celebrating, what, the 90th anniversary? That's correct. That's yes. the math. There that's we go. That's correct. And you know they are uh, one of the major sponsors of Old Home Weekend, the Provincial Exhibition here in Charlottetown for 1997. Next on the route today, we see the Child Find uh, PEI float. And once again, they've picked up that bridge theme, uh, the bridge going up through the middle of the float. And uh, on those spans, some of the safety tips that uh, Child Find offers to children. Here we hear some cheering. This is coming from the Intercity Youth Connection float. They've been around for about four years now, and uh, they offer services and activities for kids around who are youth around who are aged about 13 to 18. Kind of pick up uh, after Boys and Girls Club. Yes, exactly. They're connecting youth to a world.
world of possibilities is their theme and uh, we see the bridge part Once of nature's yeah. overall theme and the possibilities of the future one's a chef we've got a carpenter we've got a nurse we've got the, uh, a graduate which is uh, all good to see it's the first year that the inner city youth has entered the float they want to increase awareness of their program and uh, they now expand from summers only to a year-round event and uh, soon they'll begin to recruit a number of volunteers so it's just great absolutely oh and now what's coming up i see a ball i see some feet i see i see see folks from the atlantic fitness center we've got some soccer players out here following in the most uh, wonderful little car from the atlantic fitness center you know and that's something uh -oh, that would, that would, oh, oh, oh oh i see somebody yes i see a familiar sweaty I see little face he's there. not going very quickly matthew are you on board matthew where are you <laughs> I call it pure pain. It's painful. How, how are you guys? Hoping? When you're used to it, came in in the middle, but there's a warm up, a nice cardio. Anybody that can ride a bike can do this. So this is lots of fun, isn't it? You're convincing me. Hey guys, is it fun? Yeah, you're all lying. You know, I'm at my ideal weight if I were six foot nine. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. Cycling. That is studio cycling. Yeah. And time for a rest for all of us. We'll be back in a hop, skip, and a jump. How's that? <laughs> For more than two centuries, Charlottetown has been laying on its hospitality to some pretty interesting visitors. And today we're still at it, with a summer filled with lots to see and lots to do, right up to the Festival of the Fathers. In between, there will be plenty to see and do, and maybe a few ghosts to get acquainted with. With 200 years of history and hospitality behind us, we're ready to make your time with us unforgettable in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. Here we go, Belfast. Uh, there's a little golf course coming up here, Roger. It is a little golf course. You've got to stay here, Four. though. You can't get out there. <laughs> Aww. This is the second year for the Belfast Highland Greens. In fact, I think they have won an award in last year's parade. They were, I believe, the best first-time entry in mm -hmm. 1996. And on the Greens today, we have board members Brian McKinnon, and Cheryl Gillis, Sinclair McTavish, Harold Murphy's aboard, and John McCachran. And, of course, there's a piper. You couldn't go to the Belfast Greens it's without Douglas a piper. It's Douglas Stewart. He's Douglas playing the pipes. Stewart. And Scott, Scott McPhail. Scott McPhail is driving. <laughs> now, nobody's ever going to know what part of Scotland we came from. No. <laughs> <laughs> Can you read that along the side there, Roger? Well, I, I'm, let's put it this way. It means a thousand welcomes, right? Yep. It's, it's traditional Gaelic. Gaelic welcome. It's your traditional Gaelic welcome. We will not take a run at that. No, I won't. It's a community, uh, community cooperative, this golf course. Holland College is back this year, welcoming the world of learning. Here we see a huge globe with uh, names of all the countries that Holland College has partnered with over its years of existence, like uh, Belize, uh, China, Malaysia, Japan, the African countries, over 50 in all. It's interesting, isn't it? You, students come every year, but you don't realize the, no, uh, the and scope and the depth. of. Uh, and the other thing that's happening, of course, um, I went to Holland College, and a lot of the self-directed learning program they have uh, there is was quite a deal of pioneering put into that. It was one of the first places in the world to develop it. Nobody stood over you with a stick. You they had did to do not. it yourself or else you So didn't. they've uh, been yeah. taking that to other places as well. I hear more music and that's the Heather Bells Girls Pipe Band and Drums. They were founded back in 1964 by the late piper uh, Harold Sutherland. The band is made up of girls 11 to 16 years, the average age this year about 13. They represent the town of Picto, Nova Scotia, a steep uh, in Scottish tradition, and today we on Prince Edward Island benefit from all of that as we welcome the Heather Bell Girls Pipes and Drums. What the purple colors. That's the Sutherland part. The ancient Sutherland part.
these bands are being judged as they go in front of the reviewing stand here. And later on this afternoon, we'll have the results from those. Matthew, you're aboard a winner. That's right. I'm here with Jennifer from the Island Tell Float. Jennifer, why don't you tell me how much uh, work went into this, the outstanding achievement float? Well, a lot of work from a lot of people, many, many volunteers went into this. And we're really pleased to be here celebrating the opening of the link and welcoming the world uh, to Island the Island. What is the theme of your float now? Well, we'd like to point out that there's more to uh, coming to the island just going over a bridge. You also come here via the internet and other ways we communicate today. And we have a fiber optic link in the bridge. And uh, we welcome everybody uh, to the island that way. Okay, thanks a lot, Jennifer. Yeah, okay. More than concrete. <laughs> have fun. Okay, bye now. Thanks, Matthew. Here is the Chances Family Resource Center float and chances standing for caring, helping, and nurturing children every step of the way. From newborn all the way to age six. And this is their first time in the Gold Cup Parade, and their theme this year is Children, Our Bridge to the Future. On the float, uh, kids dressed up, representing a lot of different professions, uh, which we've seen a lot of today. Doctors, firefighters, RCMP, and official persons. Interesting there, you see the grandmother, see the two in the uh, RCMP uniform? Yes. That's a grandmother and a granddaughter. And, that's impossible. Uh, that's, yep, the grandmother is an RCMP officer, and she's got uh, her granddaughter, I, I would say in an adult size, RCMP that's uh, unbelievable. costume or uh, uniform as well. Here's the uh, uh, the Guardian float. That's right, with their ship made from travel posters, uh, yeah. their theme. The Images of the World, it is, uh, brought to you by the newspaper that has been serving Islanders for over 100 years. This is a human-powered float, Roger. Is that right? Yep. Boy, Boy Scouts? Scouts? That's right, oh, inside. The poor, the poor Boy Scouts. <laughs> <laughs> or the poor Scouts. I don't, they don't call them Boy Scouts anymore, I'm told. What's that? That's a dog. That's a, I think that was a Pomeranian dog. That's a Pomeranian dog. Oh, and there's a cat. This is this is Snookums, I bet you. We're welcoming Alberta. You can you can see the Western theme, truck wagon horse. Uh, Those are quarter horses there with the wagon. There's Snookums. Look, I was yeah, right. You're right. Welcome. Quarter Alberta. horses and the wagon are owned by who? Carl Arnold and uh, Barb Horning. And actually, actually, one of these horses took third place. You were telling me that earlier on. That's right. In uh, uh, at the provincial exhibition this week. The decoration carried out last night by Bev Barr, who manages the store on Peters Road, and uh, Donna Wheatley, who owns it. This is their first year in the parade, as you mentioned. Okay, now we're looking at tomatoes. We're looking at an export. It's got to be Van Campen. You've got to buy them tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> they're heading off to market in their yeah, antique the wagon. Bridge. Look, in New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, <laughs> two-way street. Out of the garden, yeah. off to the bridge. <laughs> the wagon on the float is loaded with those boxes. Uh, they came from the uh, scrap metal dealer, is that The wagon right? did, yeah. 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 Bill, Bill rescued uh, that. Bill, Bill Van did. Campen, who's driving the truck yeah. today. And restored it. Uh, you see Darren and Nicholas as well, riding in the wagon on back. Now, we see the colors coming up here. going east. From Morel, the Community Learning Center, Incorporated. This summer, they offered an upgrading program to improve math and English skills to students uh, 7 to 12 years of age. And uh, what did they do? They, they made a float. That's right. <laughs> That's not all they did. <laughs> you can see that what there's a bus in the middle. Some of the computer programs they were working on this summer were called the Magic Bus. And that's right. why there's that's computers and the bus. It. A guy there surfing the net, you and can see. Other, other kids right on at computers, surfing the net on board. Students uh, and instructors, Brenda Campbell, A.J. McFarlane, Amanda Leibolt, and uh, Corinne Van Diepen. Now we've got small fry coming up, and uh, they're the company Time for a snack, from about halfway through, aren't Summerside. We? They are welcoming Walt Disney, and we're going to see. You can pick out a number of Walt Disney characters this on here. This their second year with the float. They, they, that's they right. They as well, a business that's been up and running, uh, started at Slemon Park in Summerside just a year and a half or so. Ago. And we see Beauty and the Beast there. Who else can you pick out? Oh, Minnie Mouse, Mickey Mouse. Yeah, and there's uh, a little lion there. And the Dalmatians, Dalmatians. Yeah, isn't that yeah, cute? Yeah, and the Humpty Dumpty chip bags. Isn't that cute? Charlottetown Hotel is off to Rosie's Country Roadhouse. The float done up just like Rosie's, with the red and white checkered claws of the tables, and the audience in place for a roaring good time. This has been the dinner theater offering all summer at the Charlottetown Hotel, and the cast features Michelle Denning, Kate Proctor, Mike Ross, Jeff Zatt, Con's son, Ed Kennedy, Dave Gibbler, and Irma Gesso. <laughs> so the chef is working, eh? The chef is working. 
Matthew Rainey, I think, is with the Conehead, who is uh, now a father, Matthew. Uh, I'm down here on the street with my twin brother, the Conehead. How's it going, Conehead? It's doing very well. It's a very lovely keep day. Moving. Keep moving here. Okay, we'll keep moving. <laughs> so how are you feeling? What are you here for today? Uh, well, we're here for the uh, Panthers Hockey Booster Club, and our theme is Welcome to the Jungle. I guess that's the one part of the world. Uh, it's a great day out today. Folks have been real good along the way. A little warm in this costume, though, but it's not as bad as the guy rollerblading on the uh, on the Panther outfit with the big hat on. <laughs> it's worse. Okay, you go to it, pal. Okay. And there's that big Panther head. The players come out of that for every game. <laughs> and there goes the going head. Listen, it's funny. <laughs> I know, I know Wade Babineau pretty well, but Wade has just become a father, and he's got a little take at home that can calm him down so fast. <laughs> Wonder if he'll get him a little tiny cone head. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he will. On the back I'm here, sure you see the will. new look for the uh, Panthers mascot here, too, for this And we ball. wish them well as they head into dry land training, and uh, let's hope this is going to be the year in the AUAA. There's the new, new mascot there. And now a welcome to Over a to Nova second Scotia. time visitor. We're not, these guys are not going to be let back into the Westville Fire Department. They're volunteers. They, uh, you can hear them doing the wedding here. It's, it's unbelievable. There's a shotgun wedding on board, right? That's right. And uh, every year they come up with quite a humorous float. I think they won last year for best humorous float. They travel all over the place. And then they put out a whole lot of money from their own pocket to come yeah. here to the Gold Cup Parade. They spent over $1,000 of, of their own money. They came here because of Kevin Dooley, right? That's right. He always came here as a child. His father worked with the fire department in Westville, brought them over to the parade. And uh, he's carrying on that tradition, uh, bringing the float. Too. Well, Truro is a community that we all know about, and they have a community band that's been in existence for well over 100 years. We know it was around when the Provincial Normal School was formed in 1855. They draw their membership from throughout central Nova Scotia, directed by Ken Henderson. We welcome back once again. This is their third consecutive year after a bit of a layoff, Cheryl. Uh, it's a concert band. They had a busy winter uh, oh boy, making music, ever. a lot of uh, community events and causes, and they go through uh, the busy summer, too, parades throughout the province of Nova Scotia. You can catch them this afternoon on the steps of Confederation Center, two to four, as part of that four-band ensemble. concert band into another group that raises an awful lot of money for an awful lot of needy people oh, uh, yes. all over the world. And the very familiar uh, hats and tassels here from uh, the Shriners. This is the temple based in Halifax, uh, jurisdiction over Nova Scotia and PEI. They have about 150 members. And the uh, Prince Edward Island president is uh, Heath Delaney, and uh, our head potentate is Donald Judson. Now, all Shriners are Masons, and uh, besides acting in the Shriners' cause, they keep up their Masonic activities as well. They have assistance to local and regional hospitals, the IWK in Halifax, and uh, they also operate 22 hospitals, orthopedic spinal cord, and burn institutes across North America. Over a million dollars a day goes out just to operate those hospitals. And they've been here uh, since about 1912. We see here the uh, Red Oak Shrine Club, for those that don't recognize that, one of two clubs on Prince Edward Island, and the Red Oak Club uh, covers Prince County and hails out of Kensington, PEI. We also have uh, in Charlottetown the Island Shrine Club, of course, that, that covers Queens and Queens of Kings. And Matthew Rainey has uh, got a special guest. Yeah, you never know who you're going to find in the crowd here at the uh, Gold Cup Parade. I'm here with Bill Chandler, the president of the parade committee. Bill, how does it feel to see all of this come together now? Uh, it's quite a relief to finally see it happening and being such a good show. It looks really good from where we're sitting anyway. Now, we're just getting to enjoy it in one day. What kind of work goes into something like this? Uh, we work on this parade 12 months of the year between raising money, booking the bands so they're here early, booking our special features like the inflatable balloons. Uh, we take a little slow spell January and February, and then we gear up again March, and it's non-stop from there on. You'll have your first parade meeting for next year in a couple weeks. Yeah, we'll have a wrap-up meeting for this parade on Wednesday, and then we'll start planning for the next parade in early week after that. 
what do you think of this parade so far? Oh, so far it looks wonderful. The floats look really good and the bands are great. And I'm happy. Great. We're happy too, Bill. Thanks for all your hard work. Okay. Thanks, okay. Bye-bye. Thanks very much, Matthew. And uh, Shriners are... Uh, They've got the their little cars. They're little cars Harley with Temple them this year. They're little antique cars. I just cars. want to make a point on Don Judson's behalf. He's the head coach today, I mentioned. And uh, this is the second time that Prince Edward Island has had what Norman Thompson of Stratford was. The, um, the head, uh, the head hon honcho right. back in, in 1989. So it's nice to see that, that Island Shriners are taking a leadership role. And they really did provide some service to uh, a good friend of Memphis's. Uh, oh, we, we've met her on a, on a number of occasions this year. Just got back from Philadelphia. That's right. And we hear a lot of Islanders got a chance to hear a lot about the, that Shriners yep. Hospital this year after Jennifer Coughlin, who uh, suffered the spinal cord injury, came back. Uh, uh, from uh, from that hospital and where she got a lot of treatment. She was there for several months, right? Mm. Matthew, uh, you have a special guest again. Well, yeah, you, you, as I said, Roger, you never know who you're going to find in the crowd here. What's your name, sir? Mark. And where are you from? Tennessee. So that's a long way to come for the Gold Cup Parade. Are you yeah. just vacationing on the on? No, we just drove up today for the parade. <laughs> oh, that's, a big, that's a big commute. <laughs> now, what is, uh, what is her name? Cameron. Cameron. Oh, she's beautiful. And now, what's, uh, what do you think of the parade so far? Good. She likes the horses. What brought you to the island? Vacation. My parents have a place here. All right. All right. Well, thanks for coming and enjoy the parade. Thank you. Okay. All the way from Tennessee. You never know who's out there, eh? No, that's right. Just to pick up, we were talking about Jennifer there. Uh, the Shriners arranged for an air ambulance to carry her and her parents uh, and an IWK Grace nurse to Philadelphia and uh, assisted the family with local costs while they were there. And uh, she was there for about three and a half months. It was quite a spell she had while she was there. And also another another point of interest, I mean, a lot of Islanders have gone to the Shriners Hospital in Montreal for various reasons, but this year the hospital started an out, outreach clinic in Sydney, Nova Scotia, and uh, they came there to, you know, it was over 20 patients came, came to see them uh, during that one-day clinic. So it, it, you not only have to go a long distance, they're, they're kind of coming, coming to the community, which is being made, I suppose, with uh, new technology. Now, coming up here, we've got a convertible covered with red maple leaves. This is from the Canada Day Committee, and uh, we've got all kinds of Canada, was holiday, wasn't it? Canada Day ambassadors. That's right, way back when. That was a holiday. Boy, that seems like <laughs> a year ago. And they have uh, a lot of the youngsters you see walking around are the Canada Day Youth uh, Award mm -hmm. winners, and they've been chosen to represent uh, what youth across the country feel about the country and uh, for some of the work they've done to enrich the lives of uh, their fellow Canadians. We've got lots of people. Timothy Arthurs, right? Uh, Katie Elliott from Glen Valley, John Flood of Charlottetown, Ashley Parker, Hazel Grove, Brian Kipper of Charlottetown. Boy. That's right, and in the car, Glenda Hawkins of Murray Harbor. Now, we have another another big float this coming along a here. Oh, I see people dressed not unlike us, and they've taken their hats hey, off Hey, this as is well, the Roger. Capital Commission, our sponsors. Sponsors of our parade this year. They won the Institutional Award, I think. Yes, Am I right? Best Institutional they did. Look, Award. It's not That's official right. until we, until we see the letters. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the theme of the float this year, welcoming those who built Canada in 1864 Sean, and Sean uh, welcoming the world a, today. Having a glass of... Uh, there we go, Just yes. A glass <laughs> of, uh, How gracious. That is John A. And every day at lunchtime, you can catch uh, the pageant right. here in, uh, in Charlottetown. We you almost, never know when you're going to meet a father. Well, we almost walked into the middle of the pageant the other Wasn't day. Wasn't that funny? We, we were going to go to the front door of Province House. Let's tell our viewers, you and I, when we, we were just yeah. about to head out the we front door. We were just heading out the front door, and this lady said, uh, oh, oh, better not go that way. You'll be in the middle of the performance, <laughs> and we wouldn't know our lines, so it would have been bad. <laughs> okay, and uh, coming up next here, we have got uh, some more of the antique car and trucks. Keir McLeod, all, always uh, a lot of antique trucks and cars from him in the parade, and he's even got a bridge on one of them this year. Look, he's got a bridge with a couple of little oh, construction tops going over the top. Yeah. This is his 1936 GM pickup truck. That's uh, Keir's son, Sam, in the driver's seat. And uh, they're welcoming the rest of the world to PEI. Okay, quick break. We'll be back with more Parade 97 after this message. For more than two centuries, Charlottetown has been laying on its hospitality to some pretty interesting visitors. And today we're still at it, with a summer filled with lots to see and lots to do, right up to the Festival of the Fathers. In between, there will be plenty to see and do, and maybe a few go with. With 200 years of history and hospitality behind us, 
We're ready to make your time with us unforgettable in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. And here we are live from Charlottetown with this year's Gold Cup Parade. Little cloud, little cloud, sun thin, right? Yeah, just a little, but it's nice. That's nice. Cool. It keeps it from being too bright. What have oh, we got here? I hear music. music. Yeah, I hear Sober. music. Music, maybe? That's the Sober so. music, right? <laughs> Sober reflective music. They welcome the world of music on board the Sober's band with island musicians Chris Smith on guitar and vocal, Claire Kaisley, uh, piano, and, and uh, organ. And organ, yeah. Who else is there? Daryl Galant playing the bass, Paul Christian has the congas and the percussion stuff, and Sean Dixon is in the back with that drum kit. Dave McDonald, of course, owner of Sober's, did most of the decorating for this float, and uh, Sober to Summerside. Summerside. Actually, Dave McDonald is driving the car today, too. Yep. Okay. There he is. He's waving at us. And it says, Old McDonald had a band. Now, the uh, highlight of, of the Gold Cup Parade and uh, Old Home Week each year is the Gold Cup Ambassadors. And we're ready to meet our first ambassador, the daughter of Irwin and Sarita Newman of Cornwall. Hello, my name is Jill Newman. I'm 19 years old from Cornwall, and I'm proud to represent Energy Level, leaving from post position number eight. Post position number eight for uh, Jill Newman, and uh, it's going to be interesting. Uh, that, that horse that she's drawn, a nice gray son of lag, owned by Ken Summer of Elmara, Ontario. Uh, you're going to get out to the race, aren't you? Oh, I never miss it. I, I never, never miss it. it. And uh, Jill's actually going off to uh, UPEI for her third year in the science program. And after that, she wants to enter the field of medicine. Absolutely great. Well, Comedy Hour, who won the first trial on Saturday night, has drawn this ambassador. Hi, my name is April Hicken. I'm from Laura Montague. I'm 20 years of age. And the horse I'm representing is Comedy Hour, leaving from post position number three. And uh, April is the daughter of Charlie and Cheryl Hicken, and uh, they are from Lower Montague. She's finished two years so far at the University of Prince Edward Island. That's great. Plans to go into recreation management program at Holland College. Yep. That's where you graduated from. Well, our next uh, ambassador is a graduate of Colonel Gray High School right here in Charlottetown. Hi, my name is Amber Doyle. I'm 20 years old and a resident of Charlottetown. I'm proud to be representing a village jet leaving for post position number six. And uh, Amber is the daughter of Diane Doyle and Wayne and Paula Square Briggs in Charlottetown. She's a graduate of Colonel Gray, and she's going to go off to the Academy of Learning this fall. And Village Jet is owned by Robert Green and Terry Neal of Grimsby, Ontario, along with Stephen Witt of Smithville, and uh, could be a threat tomorrow night's big race. Gordon Carlton, the Confederation Bridge, is where this ambassador hails from. My name is Robin Walsh and I'm 19 years of age. I live in Borden, Carleton, and this year I'll be proud to represent Acton Amigo leaving from post position two. And oh boy, will he be the crowd favorite owned by Joe Smallwood. He'll be driven by Gary McDonald oh. and we hope perhaps he could win it all. Wouldn't that be exciting? Oh boy, it will be. Now post coming position up, two. Coming up just behind the ambassadors here, we can hear another uh, pipe band. This is the Belfast Pipe and Drum Band, and uh, we'll sort of take a break from the ambassadors and listen to them for a moment. They're a group of Celtic performers under the direction of 17-year-old pipe major Jamie Gillis. Well, the daughter of Sue and Paul Power out in Fort Augusta. Ambassador number five. Hi, my name's Noella Power. I'm 19 years of age from Port Augustus, and I'm proud to represent Bowen the Fiddle, leaving from post position number five. And Bowen the Fiddle, Cheryl, on Monday night won trial number two in a time of 57 and a bit, uh, driven by Paul McKenzie. Not sure who's going to be up. There is some talk that uh, possibly we'll have a driver in from Montreal or Ontario to uh, to take on the, the chore. But uh, Bowen the Fiddle is going to be uh, perhaps one of the front, uh, front runners and certainly will be trying to get to top right off the bat. Island-owned Elite Colleen has drawn our next ambassador. Hi, I'm Jennifer Dignan. I'm 21 years old. I'm from Charlottetown. I'm representing Elite Colleen, leaving from post position number four. 
So uh, Jennifer's been spending the summer as a park supervisor with the Charlottetown Parks and Recreation Department, and she's going back to continue studying in uh, the recreation program at Holland College this fall. Yeah, Elite Clean, we should talk about just very quickly, owned by Dr. Ian Moore, uh, will be driven by Dr. Ian Moore on uh, Saturday night and leaves from post position number four. Entering her third year in the science program at UPEI. Who is it? Hi, my name is Shelley Clory. I'm 23 years of age. I live in Charlottetown, and I'm being proud to represent Victoria's Breeze in from post position one. Victoria's Breeze, what a great name. It's Back a wonderful again this name. Year, draws the rail. I think it had the eight hole last year in the final uh, from Montreal. And uh, Dougie McGregor is going to be back up in Victoria's Breeze, and this little devil's going to get him down to the half. I'll tell you, <laughs> he can fly. Shelley's the daughter of <laughs> Joyce and the late Joseph Glory in Charlottetown, and she's at UPEI. Mom and Dad is Judy and Reggie Hughes. Who's the ambassador? Hello, my name is Renee Hughes. I'm 22 years of age. I live in Fort Augustus. I'll be representing so few math, leaving from post position number seven. Sophie Matt, uh, owned by Elwood Lawton, of, uh, just outside of Charlottetown here, out in the Stratford area, leaves from the outside post seven, will be driven this year by Island native Brian McPhee. And Trené is going to be entering the administration program, public administration, that is, at Holland College. So. And those are our eight Gold Cup ambassadors for 1997. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Bringing in the paper. That's a big dog. That's a big dog for Windsor, actually. Is that right? Yeah. This good is boy, mess. good boy. This is one of those nice inflatables. Stay That's there. Right. Stay over there and don't drop that paper on me. And we see an interesting group of people. It oh, is the yes. Charlottetown Community Clash that they've been practicing religiously over the last year. <laughs> Gordy Lawler takes them through the streets of Charlottetown and... Uh, it's just a kind of a hodgepodge of islanders. A hodgepodge. And, away and they're here. having a ball. You can tell by the costumes and by how they painted up goes. some of the instruments. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> He's got a swing and a spore in there. I wonder what tartan that is, right? Looks like one of those ones we saw a little earlier. Here's a blue guy. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> I wish they'd play. Yeah, we come what? on. We have a guy in long johns and a top hat. Here they come. Let's give a listen. That's better. <laughs> That's their tenth year in the Gold Cup Parade for the Community Clash Band. Musicians, music teachers, music professors, a whole, as Roger said, a hodgepodge of musical people from around uh, the region. And that's a very positive hodgepodge. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. In the nicest possible way. Yes. Okay, you want to name that dog, Roger? Be very kind. Very nice doggy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would you call him Big? <laughs> If that dog hits something, oh. you and I are going to be, you know what? Oh, look, I'm hungry, and I'm just hungry. in time. Oh, oh, a real buffet, maybe? Yeah, on wheels. On wheels, IGA. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, Matthew. On board the float, Bob and Joy Young. Matthew, where are you, Matt? <laughs> I'm down on the ground here, Rog. You know, leading up to this, I, I'm in training. I'm on a steady diet of pizza and donuts, but today I'm having an apple here, and I'm joined with Bob Young, the IGA float. Bob, how's it going? Things are great here today. Great weather, big turnout. What, what's your message with this float? Fresh fruits and vegetables at IGA. Fantastic, sir. Thanks a lot. We've even got the IGA spelled out in plums today. Seven or eight hundred dollars worth of fruit and vegetables on board. I want to be around when they stop. Yes, okay. Here's the Rotary Club of Charlottetown Royalty serving Prince Edward Island, and this group was involved in the uh, drive across the link. That's, that's right, and we've got on board lots of the um, uh, the young people who have been on rotary exchanges rotary to a number of different countries. Australia, New Zealand. And uh, young folks on the front who uh, hope to be uh, getting into that program when they get a bit older. Yeah, uh, the Rotary Club of Rotary Club. Royalty. I hear some music. The familiar I, I fiddle? Do, I do, I do. It is Richard Wood, along with Gordon Belcher, who next Monday are going to be at the Canada Games for Cap Prince Edward Island Day. That's right, and actually from noon until four today, they're going to be part of the family entertainment uh, sponsored by Peaks Wharf Merchants uh, on the, the waterfront. That's representing today, the Peaks Wharf Merchants Association, and they have welcoming a whole the tropical up. paradise of Tahiti. That's right, we have, we have mermaids on the front and uh, grass skirt on the back. 
And as we uh, let our foot do a little tapping here, uh, maybe we can pause for this message. And you real hard, Homer said you give us a special step here. For more than two centuries, Charlottetown has been laying on its hospitality to some pretty interesting visitors. And today we're still at it, with a summer filled with lots to see and lots to do, right up to the Festival of the Fathers. In between, there will be plenty to see and do, and maybe a few ghosts to get acquainted with. With 200 years of history and hospitality behind us, we're ready to make your time with us unforgettable in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. Friends of Port Le Joie. Amis de Port Le Joie. Today, besides the Gold Cup and Saucer Day, we're also celebrating National Acadian Day, and here are some of the main celebrants. They oh, are that's Michelle the National <laughs> Gallant, right? Yes, his wife Anne Cormier and uh, their three children. And uh, these were the first Acadian settlers in Port Lachois in 1720. Wow, before uh, we were born. Non-native settlers to set down roots here. Yes, just a little before you, Roger. Exactly. And uh, the, uh, the Acadian settlers here are played by Ivan Beliveau, Sister Marie Arsenault, Rance and Adina okay. No, and uh, yeah, Marie Jean Bourgeon. They've got a big do coming up out there as well, right? Compu right, College this preparing. Afternoon. That is this afternoon? That's good. starting at uh, 3 o'clock. Okay, good to get that in. Compu College preparing all of us for the world. Of course, the world here is portrayed through the costumes worn by the children on the float, children of students and staff at Compu College. And the various signs, Prince Edward Island, etc., etc. Here's the Community Baptist Church from the Community uh, uh, Church featuring the country gospel singers from Tennessee and from Mississippi. They're here to perform concerts uh, after this mobile one, of course. Tonight, again, Saturday and Sunday out on the airport road. The theme on this float that was put together by a whole gang of volunteers from the church is the Community Baptist Church reaches out to the world through partnership mission. And uh, now for something completely different, we're heading off on two wheels for a change and we see a guy in a fairly precarious position on a mountain bike here. By road, by mountain, by backcountry. This is Smooth Neil, Cycle and Matt Rainey's on board. Is he? Neil, or on long side. what this is all about. Well, we're a bunch of cyclists. We're promoting our big race. It's happening uh, two weeks time, August 30th at Brookvale. It's called the Red Mud Mountain Mayhem. It's going to be a hoof. And uh, just going to be... Uh, Everyone from Atlanta, Canada is going to be there to go racing. All the mountain bikers from the island are going to be there. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be a real spectacle. Okay, we wish you the best of luck, Neil. All right. Thanks. See you, Matt. Okay. That's uh, Neil Robertson, the owner of Smooth Cycle. Yep. And I uh, see a lot of BMX bikes going around here, mountain bikes, road bikes. Uh, and, Kent uh, Wood, Rob, uh, Robinson, Larry Cosgrove, Cheryl... Bugden, along with Carl Burke, Luke McDonald, Jamie Vancouver, Jeff Murray, and Vince Lavers all uh, pedaling. Pedaling their, their way along. Along. Yeah. this morning. Yeah, yeah and I like the problem. guy in the back just being towed along. He's got Makes a bungee sense. cord and a snowboard. <laughs> Imagine if you kind of <laughs> held wheels. him and <laughs> let him go. <laughs> and the festival's called Red Mud Mountain. Let's Mayhem. see how, how good our viewers. You may remember seeing Natalie Allen's photo in the Charlottetown Guardian. She was the girl wearing an evening gown with rollerblades. How could you forget her? That was an unforgettable picture. <laughs> Tell me more about her. She is this year's Miss Northumberland. She's the 15-year-old daughter of Alva and Shirley Allen of Murray yeah. River. And there she is, Natalie, in the back of that boat. She's going into grade 10 at Montague High. She plays hockey. Just grade 10. Yeah. Fantastic. And uh, she's going to hockey camps all summer long. But, but on the day that she was crowned, I'm told, she won the female log rolling contest at right. the North Harbor Loop Fisheries Festival. <laughs> she played a couple of baseball games, what, in the afternoon, worked as a volunteer at the supper, <laughs> and then turned around and went to the pageant. There was only six or 700 people in attendance and, uh, and won it. And walked away with that, or imagine? rolled away or something. What a day. What a kid. Yeah, and they've... Uh, the Atlantic Muscle Growers this there is the providing the truck. year as well that the Northumberland Fisheries Festival has been, you know, in, in business. It's a big uh, fundraiser. It for is that a major fundraising Arena. event for the for the Northumberland area. Uh, we do have a uh, bit of a break in the parade. We we've don't got know about why. Ten or fifteen <laughs> minutes. Well, no, but we got lots to talk about. We're going to. We've seen a lot of the float winners, and we should point this out that the bands and the clowns and the horses, the kind of thing, as well as the best cars. 
they're going to be judged as they pass through the reviewing stand just to uh, fit up the street from us here. And of course, we're going tonight on Compass. We're going to have a replay of some of the uh, of the award winners, things of that nature, so you can catch up and uh, find out who won. Uh, this evening. And one of the bands in the running coming up well, right now. Well, it is. And all the way from Attica Nish, uh, under the direction of Pipe Major Scott Williams, uh, lead drummer Leanne Bradshaw, the Attica Nish Highland Society Pipe Band from Attica Nish, Nova Scotia. And uh, they're going to enter second year of competition at the grade le three level in the summer of 97. Most of the members from Attica Nish. going to be part of the two-hour concert this afternoon. 3 to 3.30 if you want to catch them specifically. Right? And that's the McDonald's of Clan Rannell Tartan they were wearing. It's great to have them. Now the Prince Edward Island Police Association. Well, they've they're, got they're something new they're something. starting. That's yes, right. they're up to something. And I think Matthew has gone down. Yes, I can see him on board. He's gone down to find out exactly what they're doing on that float this afternoon. Well, I'm here with uh, I'm here with Constable Marvin Cameron. Uh, Marvin, why don't you tell me what this is all about now? Well, it's uh, cops for cancer, and we're bringing it to the east. We're going to shave her all off. The, all the hair goes, and we're going to raise money for uh, for the cancer research. And so you, you're going to actually shave your head? Yeah, not only me. We've got 25 officers in Charlottetown that are willing to shave their heads uh, uh, so that we can. It's help. not really going to take you all that long to do it, is it? No, shave no, your head. There's it, not much there, it really. It takes a whole lot. We just uh, have a bit here, for, some for you as well, there. Big <laughs> oh, oh, Marvin! <laughs> <laughs> Marvin! Thank you, Marvin. Thanks, <laughs> thanks so much, Marvin. Here, is this a charge? Am I charge? No Noogie. No thanks. Charge. Back upstairs. <laughs> that looks nice, Matthew. <laughs> a whole new look. And the whole world is uh, waiting for a cure. This is the Canadian Diabetes Association and the PEI Lions Club got together on this float and uh, put together by longtime volunteers Wendy Platts, Edith McDonald, and Heather Doyle, who are all on board. You may have morning. noticed that, that uh, sedan, it was a 56 GMC delivery van owned and driven by Baxter and Gail Ramsey just back from a U.S. national competition. Look at, he's through the roof. He is absolutely through the roof. Who Young Sean oh. Allen Battams. Oh, that is. He's he just emerging 10. from the Crown Limousine. He's just 10, making a real name for himself here on Prince Edward Island. And he's about to get into his first record deal. He's Played been saving a, his money for it. What, four years ago he started playing that instrument. It's incredible. You can see him most days busking downtown, and uh, he's also performing with the fathers uh, at the province house most days as his well. His fiance is inside, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> And behind, of course, the Judy McLean dancers uh, coming up behind that crown limousine. And uh, the driver there of the limousine, by the way, is Ben Gray. Hmm. And the Here's the adventure group. And, uh... What they've got on board here for the adventure group is the line across the top yeah. representing uh, their bridge, the Burmer Bridge, one of their challenge obstacles. I wonder how Matthew's uh, hair is doing. Matthew, how are you doing? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm okay, thanks. <laughs> oh, I think the foam went to his head. Oh, okay, I'm down here. I'm with the adventure group. Hi, what's your name? Carrie. Okay, now why don't you tell me what this float's all about? Um, it's just a better ropes course. We have, uh, because it was um, welcome in the world through the Confederation Bridge, we have our own Burma Bridge that we have out on our course, and it's just recognize that and, and you're you're protecting us from the mosquitoes yeah there's a big mosquito right there <laughs> okay could you maybe go up and smack one of those cops who put this on my head Just where is he couple flo couple floats ahead work on it okay Just point him out yeah okay. <laughs> now we welcome the west point majorettes 18 member group established a decade ago and appeared in nearly every gold cup parade uh, since they were joined uh, joined up uh, back in what 1987 86 Ten years ago, that would make it 87. 87. <laughs> right on. Donna Ellis is the director, and the lead twirler is Kendra Betts. They're 6 to 15 years of age, the West Point Majorettes. And a big welcome as we take 
A quick break. We'll be right back. For more than two centuries, Charlottetown has been laying on its hospitality to some pretty interesting visitors. And today we're still at it, with a summer filled with lots to see and lots to do, right up to the Festival of the Fathers. In between, there will be plenty to see and do, and maybe a few ghosts to get acquainted with. With 200 years of history and hospitality behind us, we're ready to make your time with us unforgettable in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. Here we are at the Gold Cup Parade for, for 1997. Good for, Good for you, Mel. Right. Here we go. Scott's this is dairy. That's right. This is a dairy that uh, is around the provinces of the Atlantic provinces, and they're celebrating 97 years in the dairy business. On board the float, enjoying the daisies and the dairy products, or June McIntyre, or children of uh, Andrea, uh, Christopher, Kimberly. Also, Jordan Polly is with us today, a little neighbor. And Daisy the cow is on there as well, sitting back in the arbor. Oh, there's Daisy. Yeah, Daisy's on the side of the van, and she's on the back of the float okay. as well. Ball field, tennis court, you know what that all means? Drink milk and you're like a good athlete, right? That's right. Well, and some other things as well, probably. Our next entry is the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints, the Mormons. The theme of the float is Families Are Forever, a familiar theme for the Mormon Church. And they've got it set up like a little bit of a house inside the gable of a house. Oh, we've had a, a little a catch there by and, a dog. And oh. cats are part of the family. Isn't this great? Watch this. Watch this. He wants, he wants, he wants that ball. Alex and Jean Schumat are the parents and uh, the children on the float are some of their friends and neighbors. It's nice to see Jean once again. They had 30 members of the congregation involved in getting this float ready and the signs on it were made by 12 to 18 year olds. Here we have the Kinsman Club of Charlottetown, linked for the cure to cystic fibrosis and multiple sclerosis. This float was put together by the Kinsman and Canets, with 15 volunteers in all. And the uh, sign depicts $1 million that Kinsman and Canets in Canada donated to the Multiple Sclerosis Society over the past 12 months. And that's all going uh, toward the search for cures for multiple sclerosis and cystic fibrosis. Now, coming through here, just uh, we're going to go to uh, the Allied Youth Float, a very yes. bright, colorful float here. Welcomes and is working for the world. On the float, we see six different vignettes representing the six points of the Allied Youth Program. Leadership training, social and fitness education, community and environmental awareness, working with seniors and working with the physically challenged. And we've got Mr. and Ms. A.Y. That's right, ambassadors. the ambassadors, Sarah McGinnis and Andrew McDonald, who's also the provincial president. Also other members of the executive on board and club members from around the province. That's a, a group that's been going for a long time. They've been in the parade for 15 years. They uh, don't like to miss. Cheryl, our next group was founded, folks get this, in November of 1996 under the direction of Diane Carboneau, Dampier. The Corps made its first public appearance at the opening hockey game between Rimouski and Granby. 5,000 fans on the 19th of January this year played the Canadian National Anthem adapted to the Bugle and Drum Corps. 35 members from Rimouski, the Rimouski Drum and Bugle Corps. two centuries, Charlottetown has been laying on its hospitality to some pretty interesting visitors. And today we're still at it, with a summer filled with lots to see and lots to do, right up to the Festival of the Fathers. In between, there will be plenty to see and do, and maybe a few ghosts to get acquainted with. With 200 years of history and hospitality behind us, we're ready to make your time with us unforgettable in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. We welcome you back to the Gold Cup Parade. It's uh, almost finished for 1997, Cheryl, but we want to tidy up a couple of loose ends, and we welcome the 1996 ambassador, 
for Lisa Yobley to our uh, broadcast location. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> How uh, how's it been over the last 12 months? What have you been up to? Bring us up to date quickly. Uh, busy working. Just I just graduated from Holland College yeah. in May. Mm -hmm. um, writing lessons. As I say, a new job. New job two months ago. Okay, what are you doing? Job. Where? where? Uh, T and K fire and safety equipment. Oh, you are. Okay, yeah, so you can fill my fire extinguisher uh, well, next maybe. week or something <laughs> of that nature. Okay. But well, you're doing the writing lessons at night, right? Yeah, yeah. in the evening till about nine. I have two full-time students right Look now. Look at this a year ago. Can you kind of take a pick at their? Who's that? Oh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like being in the parade last year? That was my highlight. Mm -hmm. I loved it. That mm -hmm. was made for me. That parade. Okay. <laughs> And uh, then you went on to Saturday night to the big race, and we're going to have pictures of that in just a few minutes. So. There. there you are. What was that like? <laughs> that was, well, it was a dream come true. That's all I can say. Yeah. It must have been amazing out there, center, center field like that. Yeah, I've been, well, a good friend of mine was a gold cup ambassador in, what, 72, I think she was, and okay. her horse came forth. Who was that? Oh. Uh, Kathy Merkson. Really? Okay. Matthew Rainey has got some guests on the street. Don't you run away. We'll mm -hmm. talk to you in a second. Matt? Well, the crowd is dispersing down here on Grafton Street. I'm here with, what is your name, ma'am? Mary Beth. Mary Beth. How long have you been coming to the Gold Cup Parade? Since I was about these kids' age, seven or so, yeah. Okay, now tell me what, uh, what you thought of today's parade. It was great. It was great. I enjoyed it. It was really good. It was nice and, uh, you know, it wasn't dispersed out. It was good. Okay. Who's this now? What's your name? Cody. This is Cody. Cody and? Christopher. Christopher, Christopher what did you think of the parade, pal? Pretty good. What was your favorite part? I like the horses, the dogs, that's, those are my, I always like those guys. Yeah. I didn't like the police officers too much, Christopher. Do you see what they did to my hair? <laughs> okay, I think there's a message there, and I just want you to watch out, okay? Okay, we'll go back upstairs. <laughs> Thanks very much, Matthew, and uh, we're just going to say thank you, Lisa. You had a great year, 96 into 97. Got a winner for tomorrow night? Uh, Acton Amigo. Acton Amigo. Everybody's going to stick with the local <laughs> favorite. We'll see good you luck there. to you and good in your riding. Thank you very much. Super, super. So what do you think, Cheryl? It was great, wasn't it? What a vantage point we've got here. We should remind people, of course, of all the events going on, too, the bands that are playing around this afternoon, just after this event. Uh, Peaks people, Key is the place to be. People are heading down to Peaks Key, that's right. And, 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 and uh, then at 2 to 4 here uh, in, in the foyer area of Confederation Center, outside foyer, I guess, on the, on the top steps, a two-hour concert with four of the bands that we've seen this morning. And then later this afternoon at Fort Amherst, starting at 3 o'clock. And Lenny Gallant's going to be playing over there later this evening, along with a Cajun band uh, from Louisiana. Wow, yes. and of course we've got the gospel singers in town. Lots to do, lots, lots to, to see. see. It's the, been uh, one of those summers. important thing, it's been fun. Uh, the 36th uh, is almost over, isn't it? We've got about 15 or 20 seconds. And the weather was perfect, great was, attendance, over 90 uh, entries in this year's float. We want to thank everybody at home for being a part of our audience. Thanks to the Capital Commission, and uh, we'll put a wrap on, on this year's uh, uh, almost uh, Gold Cup parade. It's uh, it's going to be interesting uh, that the committee will now start uh, proceeding toward 1998. It uh, must they, be hard they, to turn around and pick well, up yeah. right again. Once you've gone through the excitement and the feeling of satisfaction after having such a wonderful event, mm -hmm. to start and begin again, but that's what they have to do. And I know our, our director and, and producer, Stevie Stapleton, has been working diligently with that committee. There's 15 members headed by Bill Chandler, and uh, they had a little controversy this year with the uh, city of Summerside, but uh, the parade came off uh, without any problems. And uh, as the weather, the weather certainly cooperated. I'm just this wondering, afternoon. Matthew is here. Can we, whops. Yeah, oh, he's, he's, yeah, now he's spilling like the water. Entrance, Are I? you okay? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Bond. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite nice hair. Nice James. Hair. <laughs> Mr. Bond, yeah. So, that was uh, a great show. That was, that was the most fun I've had in a couple of years, I think. Absolutely Both fantastic. Great. Absolutely great. great. Okay, folks, have a great one. Highlights tonight. Thanks for joining us. On Compass. Have a good one. Bye bye. are nascent to an island so rich and so rare I'll be driving Northumberland straight to that wonderland garden that's cradled out there and I'll bet there's no bridges from high mountain ridges on land or on sea to compare 
With the confederation that bridges our nation to Prince Edward Island so fair. And it's calling, calling me over the blue waters moving and soon I'll be strolling out there. Down by the ocean where the island devotion to Prince Edward Watch Street Sense today at 4 on CBC. So what's the firefighter for three years, though? From the men and women of the Highway Patrol and state police agencies of America, thank you for watching. Shot. Good shot. Hello, Jeff. Oh, I See, stay like down. He was going to go back this way on you. Come back in front of you. It looked like you. Yeah, was I thought he was going to turn too. Come on, Jeff. South Dakota was everything I dreamed it would be. It seemed like there were birds every place we stopped, and the company. Well, I. I couldn't have asked for a better hunting partner than Greg Riddock. They're running on the ground. Good shot. Good shot. The day was going much too fast, but I knew there'd be many more opportunities at those hard-flying South Dakota buzz bombs. Ever wonder where copper comes from? Copper used in plumbing and electric wiring. In TVs, stereos, and VCRs. And who mines the gold which found in jewelry and computers? Or the sulfur used in fertilizers which help fill that refrigerator? Where in the world does all this stuff come from? Freeport McMoran. And where does Freeport McMoran come from? New Orleans. I went out to buy a car and came home with a truck. Everybody saw my new Ford Ranger and said, Are oh, we in luck? Now I've been driving nonstop because my girl likes to shop and my mom wants a bridge from way over the bridge. And my boss just bought a condo. Better start hauling pronto. My best friend says it's cool. Let's go cruising like we did in school. Don't get me wrong, Ford Ranger. The truck I'm gonna keep. I just wish I could get some sleep. They are the few, the proud, the world's finest fighting machine. But there's one foe they have yet to beat. He may be all he can be, but he hasn't met me. The American gladiators take on the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines in the Armed Forces Challenge. This weekend, check local listings for station and time. The average sumo wrestler weighs 420 pounds. The average person puts 9,000 times that much weight on their feet every day. The average shoe just wasn't designed to take this kind of pressure, which is why Dr. Scholl's didn't create the average insoles. Using space-age materials, Dr. Scholl's has created its new line of insoles and inserts to give your shoes revolutionary support, cushioning, and shock absorption. Make life in your shoes more comfortable with Dr. Scholl's. The North American Sportsman with Gary Morris is being brought to you by Freeport McMoran Global Resource Companies. By Browning, 
the best there is. By Northlake Outdoor Footwear, take comfort to the field. And by Bushland, the leading edge in camo. Well, thanks. We'll see if we can try to do this again. This All is right. something I'd like to try once again. Uh, uh, Steve's up trying to arrange for a for a waterfowl hunt for us, so uh, we'll just go up and meet him at his truck. Okay. All right. I'm thanks, man. Cut up here and take okay. get my truck. So right. Thanks a lot. Had a great day. Thanks. See you guys. Thanks. Dakota Expeditions. Got to remember that one. You can't forget yeah. that. That's <laughs> the one place I saw a guy shoot a pheasant with a ball. <laughs> awesome. Well, Clint left and. Pheasant jumped up. The temptation was just too great. Trying to find a running pheasant in a 2,000 acre milo field without a dog is like searching for a needle in a haystack. And I wish we had old Jesse with us. I thought it was right in here. I'll play bird dog here for a moment and see if I can uh, watch for that, ba that bad boy running. You think you're so good. You just think you're so good. Then you have one get up five feet from you. Too close. Let me get him out. I'm, I'm just about out of arrows. You know what's interesting? You know, last night we were talking. Yeah. And you talked about being a four sport letterman in high school, pretty yeah. good athlete. Yeah. You know what's ironic? I was a drummer. You were a drummer? Oh, yes. I went away to college, freshman at college at the University of Northern Colorado. And this, of course, this is back in the early 60s. And you could make 50 bucks. I was playing in a band. You could make 50 bucks for FACs. So I told my college baseball coach I had labs on Friday afternoon so I could go make 50 bucks was a lot of money back then. I, that's why I started playing music. So I was playing Friday afternoon FACs, making $50. And then again, Saturday night at the same place. And we'd make 100 bucks a weekend. And I was making good money and going to college. And I'll never forget, we took a break one day. I was getting ready to walk off the stage, and here came my baseball coach on a Friday afternoon. Evidently, he'd heard I was playing the drums in this rock band out at the, one of the local hangouts. And he came up on the stage, and he said, let me tell you something, young man. I'm paying for your college education. Now, you're either going to be a drummer or a baseball player. You better make your choice. So I sold my Ludwig drums about a week <laughs> later and left the band and played college baseball. So what we need to do is we need to go down to the Long Branch tonight. I'm ready. Three. And I get you to sit in on drums, okay. and I'll get the guitar and, and sing something. It's a deal. <laughs> Let's we'll do, do that. That'll be fun. Great. Greg and I had a little bit too much fun that night, and the next morning came early. We left the hotel before daylight and headed for Terry Etzcorn's goose camp on the Missouri River. It wasn't long before there were geese everywhere. Oh, the geese fly, the ringnecks low. He had his gun and I had my Daylight comes and daylight and goes. The south and go to when they say it always blows. This Indian land, the land of Sioux, captured me, captured it up too. Walk through fields and we watch the river roll. That old Missouri filled with Indian soul. I wish you the best of luck. I hope to get one more shot here for you before you gotta get out of here.
I was a little undergunned, to say the least. Hunting geese at 50 yards in a 20 mile an hour wind with a 45 pound longbow isn't sporting. It's impossible. I could swear I heard those old geese laughing as they easily dodged my dogged arrows. But as luck would have it, Greg ended his hunt by taking two birds with one shot. I myself had a 10 a.m. plane to catch. Next time I have only a few hours to fill my goose tag, I think I'll use my trusty browning. Travel arrangements provided by Northwest Airlines. Some people just know how to fly. Miller Band and the path to stardom tonight. You're enjoying TNN, the heart of country, and your number one source for country music, entertainment, and information. If you'd like to know more about our programs or guest lineups, call TNN Viewer Services, 615-883-7000. For tickets, call 615-889-6611. Imagine over a million Christmas lights the aroma of an exquisitely prepared family-style dinner, and the sounds of holiday music. It's Opryland's Country Christmas. Two months of holiday festivities, now with extended dates from November 1st to December 26th. Take part in it all with our ultimate three-day, two-night package. You'll enjoy accommodations at Opryland Hotel or other fine area hotels. Our giant 141-foot Southern Lights Christmas tree, the Country Christmas Dinner and Musical Review, Tickets to the Grand Ole Opry, a country concert, or Music City tonight. Admission to the Art Antique and Craft Fair. A day cruise aboard the General Jackson Showboat. And you can be a part of the all-new Christmas in the Park at Opryland Theme Park. All for just $219 per person. For reservations, call 615-872-0600. It's a country Christmas at Opryland, USA. More spectacular than ever before. American Outdoors with Ron Shear is brought to you by Astro Boats, America's star performer. Mariner Outboards, they're better in the long run. Remington, it's what you're shooting for. Armor Star, America's leading brand of canned meats. And Purina High Pro, for birds, not excuses. This week, the Great American Outdoors takes you to South Florida for some outstanding largemouth bass action. Ron will be fishing at the Florida Stick Marsh outside of Felsmere, Florida with Bob Clemens, guide and BASS tournament angler. When these shiners and balloons start moving, there is sure to be some big bass in the area. Stay with us for some big bass action.
I think I'd show them that fish up for you, Bob. <laughs> I appreciate it, Ron. I'm no problem. I'm supposed to be doing that for you, though. That's all right. I That's believe yours right. is out there, way out there. Ron's getting ready to get eaten. He's yeah, he's, he's on the move, isn't he? He's on the move. I'll tell you what, we'll be right back with a great show <laughs> catching monster bass on stick marsh with my good friend Bob. We'll be right back. I'll tell you what, that wasn't bad. Didn't take long. Uh -huh. This wind dies down. Fishing really get good, won't it? There's needle loads right there. You've reached Al's Pentel Lodge. If you're calling about a guide for duck season, forget it. I'm booked. Now, if you want to know what's new in steel shot, well, that's easy. Remington Steel. It'll handle ducks and geese, <laughs> even when it's raining cats and dogs. They're wet proof because they're sealed at both ends, and the galvanized shot just won't rust. If you still have a message, leave it after the beep. Hi, Al. It's me. I've played second fiddle to a duck for the last time. Happy hunting. In my research, I fired more than 100,000 waterfowl loads, and none have been more impressive than Remington's new Nitro Steel Magnum and Express Steel. With wet-proof crimps and primers plus galvanized steel shot, they're the most waterproof loads ever. For innovation and on-game performance, load up with Remington. Get this limited edition dog collar with Remington waterfowl graphics and solid brass hardware, a $15 value for just $6.95. See this display at your Remington dealer. Become an outboard marine technician and make money. Call now. Here's your opportunity to enjoy an exciting career in the marine industry. Learn by using the latest, most up-to-date equipment in a hands-on environment. Make a career change. Call now. Begin your training as a marine outboard technician. Call Marine Mechanics Institute. 1-800-453-8600. In the future, state-of-the-art auto loaders will be engineered with red cocking indicators to identify when they're ready to fire. Ten-shot magazines for rapid loading. Rear sights adjustable for windage and elevation. Stocks will be synthetic and totally weather-resistant. The auto loaders of the future will be judged against this one. It's the first 22 from the 21st century. Viper. See it at your Remington dealer. Oh, he got it that time, Ron. Yes, Ron. Good shot. Keep, keep him up. Just keep him up. Yeah, just bring him 